Valentin Huyn is a PhD candidate and research assistant at MIT Media Lab, where his research focuses on new computer interaction paradigms for the physical space. In his talk today, he will explore how tools are being used to build, modify, and interact with hybrid objects, ob objects that combine the virtual and the physical seamlessly. Please join me in welcoming Valentin to the stage. Hello. Oh. Hello. Uh, welcome to my talk about uh, tools for indistinguishable realities. Um, when I prepared the slides, I was like, oh yeah, tools. Uh, wait a minute. Maybe I should first explain what indistinguishable realities are. So for me, indistinguishable realities means uh, a complete fusion of four enabling technologies. That is the augmented reality, that is the physical reality that we are all in here, and the Internet of Things and the World Wide Web. Let's start with uh, augmented reality and the physical reality first. Probably most of um, the work that you see at this conference uh, looks at augmented reality and the physical reality in a unidirectional um, method. That means that the physical reality is just uh, the substrate, the marker, and maybe you have sensors in that space and you augment that onto that space. But at no moment do you actually use the um, augmented reality to also have influence on the physical reality. So that maybe can look like something like that. You have like a simple sensor and you augment the sensor readings on top of that sensor. It could also look like that. Uh, here we have a one day tattoo on on the arm and have a sensor on another arm, and so I can see my, my heartbeat. But um, that is not indistinguishable realities, that is only indistinguishable augmented reality. What I mean about indistinguishable realities means that there is a bidirectional link between the physical and the augmented. So whatever I do in the augmented, it actually also can have influence on the physical. So then you can do uh, things like controlling a robot, highly intuitive, just point at it and move it to the right position. So here you, you actually point it and point it exactly to the spot. That's much more difficult when you have a remote control of some sort. You can even go and uh, control a, a drone, like six degrees of freedom. You lock it in, you move it around, you can think about it as the most uh, lightweight uh, camera crane that you can create. Um, that, again, is a very complicated if you have a, an abstract um, control. But all of these things are enabled through a feedback loop where basically the physical has influence on the augmented and the augmented controls the physical. You can go a step further and, and actually program um, the physical behavior of things. So here I have a radio with a tuning knob and a volume knob. And uh, today I expect more from a radio. I want all my MP3s represented on that radio. So I have a digital layer augmented on top. And whatever I do to uh, the physical object, it is represented in the, in the augmented. So it's really merged together seamlessly. And uh, now I can look through my MP3s on this radio. And I can just drag and drop one of the MP3s onto the radio. And I have now reprogrammed the physical object. So I can take that iPad away. And the, the radio stays with that programming. The same thing I can do with a Lego Mindstorm um, robot. And by the way, all of the demos that I show you are real working. They're all, all working. So I take a photo of that uh, Lego car and the, the photo becomes the remote control for that car. So think about uh, building any kind of machinery. You take a photo of it and, and you, you um, take, take in control of it. Here we have two lights. This is an interesting demo because it shows you that at no moment uh, you need to think about what to control, look at uh, menus and so on. You just approach an object, you just approach something in the physical world and you take control over it through the augmented reality. 
And so the interesting part is when you just look at augmented reality as a one-way direction, you have a medium for consumption of data, of, of uh, videos, and so on. But when you create a bi-directional link, you suddenly end up with a very powerful tool, a tool that is basically a digital version of a Swiss, Swiss army knife, and it allows you to uh, change the functionalities of the physical world if you create such an indistinguishable reality. So this is augmented reality and the physical reality merged together. But uh, let's put another thing into it. Let's put the Internet of Things into that whole consideration as well. Right now, um, you have actually in IoT a lot of ecosystems that are siloed. You can buy into certain ecosystems and then you only can use things in that silo. And if you want to have things of another company, you need to buy into their silos. And often you have the devices and the services of these, uh, of these companies merged together, so you can either opt in or opt out. And um, if you really want to have an indistinguishable reality, you cannot have that with these silos, because this is more like indistinguishable reality tees different uh, universes or something like that. So. <laughs> Um, there's a fundamental problem to this, um, why it is like that. And the problem is that we don't have uh, a, craft, a visual representation or a representation for the user to actually understand what is going on and to take control of that ongoing and make manipulations to it. So, and as a result, you only can say, OK, I sign into your ecosystem and please do it for me because I don't know how I actually can control it. And this is where augmented reality in combination in a bidirectional link with the physical world becomes very powerful because um, a company right now needs to think about standards between IoT as a very abstract layer. So I need to know everything that a toaster can be, everything that a food processor can be, and then I create a standard on how they can communicate with each other. But when you have augmented reality, some interesting trick happens. You can approach an object, and the object can be broken down into all of its components. And suddenly, I don't have an abstract standard anymore. I, have, uh, I can see at the toaster, and I see a heating unit, a setting knob, a slider, a timer, and then on the food processor motor and settings. And I suddenly look at the most simple standard we can create, sending simple number values from A to B. And then you can do something like, um, I, have, I have a food processor that should run for half an hour, and I don't want to stand next to it. And you look around, and like, oh, I have a toaster that has a timer. I just connect it and, and ha have created a new object, a new uh, possibility in my, in my environment. And if you want, intentionally, you can take a data point and then connect that to a, a web service, or the web service back to the data point. So we have a visual representation through augmented reality that allows you a maximum of user control. So how does that look like? So here we have a, a general purpose knob. I can draw a line from that knob to a light. And now I have con taken control over that light. I can use the same knob con connected to a seat that I am sit on. And now I have control over that seat, so I can uh, change its settings. When I leave from my office, I have connected the seat to the environment so the light turns off when I leave. And um, so I'm, when I drive home with the car, the car already sets the right temperature because before I left uh, earlier, I have uh, connected that seat also to the car. So when the light switches off, the car turns on and I can come, go home with that setting. And so I drive around with the car, and this car has a few settings that are not meant for me. Like, I need to go a couple of submenus into the onboard system from the car to access uh, sound settings that I like. But with these tools that we have, we can just connect a physical knob to these submenus. And now I have made something physical that for, before was only um, virtually accessible. I can daisy chain functions, similar like the Lego car before. And, uh, and also connect a couple of, um, of windows, daisy chain together, and have a physical control. 
Um, here, this is an example that I like. A student that we work with made that. Uh, do you know that moment when you're close to falling asleep and you read a book and all you want to do is to close the book and, and, and sleep instead of standing up and switch the light switch? I like this example because it, if we have a, a lot of these small things in our spaces that we can use augmented reality to program, and they just make our life every time a little bit more simple. But when we have hundreds of these more little simple things, this becomes very powerful, because then we live in actually a, a, a more, more simple uh, environment that is really uh, tailored to our needs. So, augmented reality, physical reality, and the Internet of Things merge together. And um, the last point to make this whole uh, uh, indistinguishable reality complete is uh, the World Wide Web. So, why World Wide Web? Yesterday, I, uh, I opened the very first web page that had ever been created in my iPhone and still looks the same way than it has been created the first day. It's 1992, 1991. Think about this with every technology that we built. We have, like, every two years we find something new. But when you deal with physical things, physical goods, there are product cycles that might take five years. They may be in use for 10 years. When you have heating units in your homes, when you do industrial uh, machinery, you have really, really long planning uh, time. So right now, if you buy into IoT silo, if you buy into uh, augmented reality silos, you, you have problems to really plan down the road uh, how, how to deal with these technologies. And the interesting thing is that the World Wide Web provides so much uh, that seems like in the right direction. So it has simple, reliable, open standards for a protocol for communication, for the publishing language to, to see, and the identifiers which you can point to information. So in the Media Lab, for the last four years now, we are building on a tool that we call the Reality Editor. And in fact, all the demos that you have seen before have been built with the Reality Editor. And the Reality Editor comes with a, a server infrastructure that we call Open Hybrid. Open Hybrid is entirely open source. It is community driven. And you can go to that web page, look it up. Everything that you saw is online. The tool, the Reality Editor, is in the iOS App Store, the open hybrid platform. You can download it. And we have built the Reality Editor and Open Hybrid platform all on web technology. So actually, all the interfaces that you saw are HTML and CSS interactive with JavaScript. The server is built with Node.js, a building on uh, JavaScript. And um, so when we use the web to build content for augmented reality, of course, you can use all tools that you know that exist to build content for the web. You actually can just build plain web page. You don't even need to add any code into these web pages, put them on our server, and you can see them augmented. So I show you a little demo for that. So here we have an artist. We have a little, little fish, and so she's moving the fish around. But the simple thing is here, she doesn't need to code anything. It is a tool from Adobe that she can use for animation, Adobe Edge Animate, and she just publishes the scene. And now she takes an iPhone, and she can see that scene right away. It gets uh, pushed through the server. And uh, so now she wants to make adjustments to it, so she can turn Outring on, and she can move that scene around with her finger. With two fingers, she can scale it. And if she wants to have it in a different angle, we have this unconstrained editing, so she can lock it in and move the scene around to put it in the right angle, uh, position it. And, and she has created augmented reality content as a web designer, as an artist. So you don't need to know anything about uh, 3D. So, of course, we use WebKit, so it comes with WebGL. So here we did a little demo with 3GS, um, adopted it for the reality editor that works live, it's in real time. And 
because it shares everything with all the stuff that I showed you before with IoT and so on. Here we have a small demo that we just put together. We have our general purpose knob and we connect it to the properties of the teapot. And now I have a physical interface for, for a virtual uh, thing. That, that platform is scalable to every size you want. So you can have 50 different controls, sensors, whatever you want, and, and con con combine it with the physicality of, uh, with the virtual uh, augmented interfaces. Okay, so of course you can use all tools that you can create 3D content with because you, we at 3GS, you can load all of this content. So I showed you what indistinguishable realities are. We have tools for users to edit and connect. We have tools for industry to interconnect their silos. We've built tools for developers to build simple user interfaces and that are tools for indistinguishable realities. Thank you. <laughs>